I'm now gonna use the joystick on the MK2 to zoom in on the sports car right here. And I wanna record a preset of this, okay? I press and hold, it turns green, and it records the thumbnail and shows in the display. Now you get the idea, I can quickly recall these, move around between them, and it's all visual. With MK2 and Canon's CR series of PTC cameras, it has never been easier to have a church volunteer or an untrained colleague at a corporate event, for example, to produce consistent and professional results. The unique color thumbnails of stored preset positions for each camera will do away with the uncertainty you faced before where you had post-it notes and scribbles to keep track of your presets. So when preset need their content updated, a simple restore of the preset will generate a new thumbnail automatically. The compact size and the large color displays make MKA2 very appealing for productions with only a few cameras and a few presets. MKA2 also has all the notorious Skahoy trademarks such as access to a ton of specific camera parameters, plus the inherent support for switches and routers to bring integration with Tally and routing to a whole new level. I'm really so excited about this feature. I want to get started right away. So we have the Canon CRN500 camera here. Awesome camera. We love it for so many reasons. And one of them being that we can pull out an image from the camera and into the controller. So watch this. I'm now going to use the joystick on the MK2 to zoom in on the sports car right here. And I want to record a preset of this, okay? So now I have the camera in position. I press and hold, it turns green, and it records the thumbnail and shows in the display. Now, um, the point is that I have more than one preset. So let's just navigate over to the headless Chinese warriors here. And uh, when we have them framed correctly, then I'm gonna record preset number two. And voila, once again, we have the thumbnail entering into the display. I can now switch between these two presets by a press of a button. So pressing this one, it goes to the sports car, pressing this one, it goes to the headless warriors. So now you can so easily see how explaining people how presets work and what you get is basically what you see in the displays. That's really cool. Now, um, we want to have a few other presets stored here. So one of them would be like our global shot. So let's just have a white shot here of the whole arrangement. I'll just move it a little bit. Um, storage here. And maybe, ah, maybe I want to change this a little bit. So now the, the point is I could just zoom out and then store it once again. So you'll see it's just updating the thumbnail in the display. What, which means basically that if I recall this preset and the car was a bike, I could just press and hold and it would make a new snapshot of that one, put it into the displays and so on. This is really the MK2 controllers. It's, it's the advantage of these color displays that you see um, shown here. And it's possible to record even more presets. You see, I'm actually uh, getting to the number 20 or, or 16 here. I um, believe that at least we can record 12 because maybe the last presets you see here are not available because the camera may not support it or our configuration has not been set up to support more than 12 presets. But the point is that we can have multiple banks of them. So let's just explore that a little bit. We, uh, we want to populate preset number four as well. So let's find some other target that could be our little color chart here, which we'll use in a moment. And I press and hold, we record the color chart. There you go. Now I'm going to preset bank five through eight. And um, this time it's going to be the OJ. Do you know how Skahoy is pronounced? Skahoy. Not Skahosh, but Skahoy. So there you have it, the HOJ, the difficult part of the company name. All right, we'll store that in preset number five. So we have bank number one, presets one to five or four, and then five, six, seven, eight, and so on. Now you get the idea. I can quickly recall these, move around between them, and it's all visual. So that was the main message of this video, but I want to make sure that you know how much more you can do with this controller. I think this is really brilliant for such as churches where you need only a few cameras. I guess in many cases you would have 
three cameras or less. So having those three cameras in the camera selector down here is really all you need. Actually, if you had more than three cameras, you can also page like you do with the presets. I'm just saying that the controller, because of the limited amount of buttons, is really useful for those use cases. Oh, by the way, if you, if you have an MK1, which is a similar controller, same size, and you, you slap it on the side of the MK2, then you can actually have more buttons, more presets readily available at your fingertips, and um, also more knobs for adjustment. So there is like an upgrade option that makes it into an even more impref impressive uh, package. But uh, today we're looking at the single CRN500 here, and now I wanna show you what the buttons on the top does. First of all, if I want to go to what we call the home screen of these buttons, then I press on the top of the joystick and then you get to the home screen. And on the home screen, you have the most important features that you can adjust on the camera. Those are things we have selected. So for instance, you have the shooting menu and the shooting menu is currently on manual. So I can put it in full auto. So we have basically these two options. It's a toggle between full auto and manual. So we also have joystick sensitivity. Now, if I set joystick sensitivity to one, it means as I push the joystick all the way to the right, you see that it's, it's gonna go slow, but as I turn up the sensitivity, it's going to accelerate. So you can see I can bring it up in pretty high speed and then I can also bring it down again. So sensitivity is pretty useful. Um, now a Canon camera like this one is actually clever enough to also be sensitive to your focal length. So if you zoom fine, uh, on your target, it's going to pan slower by itself. Awesome, thank you, Canon. That's a really good sign for quality PDC cameras. Look for that. Then, as I press the top edge of the button, I am basically cycling through the options I have available. Now, I don't wanna explain every single one of them because I've done it in a ton of videos, but you should know that this exists. It can be expanded. It can also be reduced. All our configurations are possible to manipulate, to customize them. But this is what we deliver by default and it's a pretty good start. So what you see is auto iris here. And um, I think I need to go to my home screen and, and put it into manual mode because that will make these features available. You saw the little uh, forbidden icon that you uh, see in the lower right corner that indicates that it's not available in this case because we have auto iris enabled. But if I turn it to manual, now these become available. I can adjust the iris steps by the knob here and turning that I can uh, go the other way. Obviously the shutter speed is still locked because uh, shutter speed is in in auto mode, we have um, the automatic exposure gain limit set here and so on. If I turn it back into auto, you see these become automatically managed. So this is how it works. I cycle on to white balance mode. We have red and blue gain over here. They are available despite of being in auto. So I assume this would be like a, a um, an offset from the automatically calibrated white balance. Otherwise we can put it in manual mode. And in manual, manual mode, we can of course turn these and paint the picture as we want. Let's go back to auto and we should see that it's uh, compensating at least somehow. And um, what else modes would we have? We have like uh, in many PDC cameras, fixed modes, Kelvin, tungsten, daylight, etc. cetera, uh, white balance A and B banks, which we can execute by pressing here. So let's try that out. Let's see if we get any response on that. It seems like it's pretty much close to the um, center point here. So I think I want to press those two buttons. Now, what I just did was I pressed and hold. That's usual on Skyhawk controllers that it will reset the value if you press and hold the encoder knob to the default value that it has. So what we are seeing right now is actually the neutral point of um, the red and blue gain offsets to the white balance. So, so much for white balance, you can explore that yourself. We have sharpness level, we have black gamma level, black gamma point, black gamma range. We have also put in focus mode, it's currently in auto mode. We have Canon's um, famous focus, autofocus in this one. It includes face, face catch, face only and off. So different modes the autofocus can operate on. We have uh, focus tracking and um, autofocus speed over here, some that we can set. Then we have shutter mode, gain mode, ND filter. Oh, ND filter is pretty cool. That's one of the things that this camera does over the CIN300. Uh, we have uh, built-in um, motorized ND filters. So you see, uh, this is really useful if you have a ton of light, like outdoors or a really, really bright studio. And then we have speed mode here, preset speed. 
um, store mode over here, which I am not 100% sure what is, but definitely a setting that you will know if you own one of these cameras. Just to show you that as Skyhoy typically does, we implement all the specific features of that camera. So it, it's becoming native control. You have the parameter list is basically complete for these cameras. So anything you know they can do, we can control. And that's really awesome. Going back to the home screen, that's what I wanted to show you for this controller. And you'll see an echo of that in a ton of other videos we host on PDC cameras with either Canon or one of the other many lovely brands that we support like Panasonic and Sony and Bird Dog and Bolin and PDC Optics and you name it. I mean, we have 30 plus different brands and models supported with our PDC controllers, if, if not 50, really. So um, you can rest assured our universal controllers are going to support your camera as well. And I want to show you how easily you can add that as well, because this is all managed by the Blue Pill platform, which is built inside this one. And Reactor is the software that comes along. It has a UI, web UI, that looks like what you see on the screen here. So I already added one camera. What if I wanted to add a second camera? So you see in the search box, we have currently added the CRN500. If I press the add button, it's going to search on my network for other cameras, like RoboShot from Vadio. What else do we find? We have um, a JVC camera. In fact, this is not even a PDC camera. It's a, it's a studio camera from JVC, but it turns up here in the device discovery and we can still add it to the controller. The joystick wouldn't make sense, but the camera selector would add it and you could adjust parameters on this camera. We can find others. There are more RoboShot cameras. We have Ada PDC cameras, another awesome brand, Everett here. And we could go on like that. Now, some cameras will not let themselves auto discover. Some of those would be Visca cameras. So we can also go to the manual mode. What should we search for? Let's search for Panasonic, for instance. There you see a whole bunch of Panasonic models presented to us. Let's search for Bird Dog. We find Bird Dog P100, 200, 400. They are all right there. And if I select it, it's going to be added like that. Now, it's um, currently disconnected because I still need to add an IP address to have this camera added. And that's basically the process that we are looking into. So uh, let's add a Sony camera here. And same thing, it is added as a device. It's added over here in my camera selector. And on the controller, you see it added as well. I can even change the title of it. So if I want it to be Bird Dog P4, let's say that's our nickname for this camera, then we just change it here and it's going to be updated in the display. Super easy. Thanks for watching this video. Follow us on social media. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because we are pushing out content all the time about the Blue Pill platform and all the awesome innovations from Skahoy.